Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks for being here. I'm your host, Karen Martell, and today I'm going to be asking the number one question on every woman's mind, which is, what is the best diet for weight loss? And of course, there's not going to be an easy answer to that, but what I can share with you is what I have found working with thousands of women in the last 20 years of my own practice and what I've seen work best. So that's what we'll be going through today. Uh, but to get started, I just want to share with you guys that uh, my next Intro to Keto for Women's Hormone Health Right, right, right after I just said there's no one perfect diet. <laughs> I don't claim keto is the perfect diet, but I have seen it work very, very well for women and their hormones. And I'm going to tell you why that is in today's podcast. But yes, the next intro to keto for women's hormone health starts April 8th. So registration just opened up for it a few days ago. Um, and you can get in on the early bird registration price if you register before April 1st. So the program's a 21-day program. We are running it from April 8th to April 27th. Three, three solid weeks of information-packed content, you guys. So you will be getting a 21-day introduction to the ketogenic diet. So if you're new to keto or you're interested to try keto, then definitely this is for you. But it's also for those of you that have been trying, that have been following a ketogenic diet and you've either hit the dreaded weight loss plateau, which happens to everybody, or you just since day one have not seen the results that other women have. So this is for you as well. There's lots of information about keto, so you will maybe get to learn something that you didn't know already and maybe that you were doing you know, supposedly wrong. Um, but there's also gonna be a ton of information on your hormones. So we're gonna help you to identify which hormones are, are out of balance. Um, I'm gonna give you my hormone questionnaire, so uh, this can kind of help you determine which ones are and which ones aren't without having to spend money on a bunch of tests. Um, and I'm going to help you to determine which keto version is going to be best for you. It's kind of all about finding your perfect keto diet. Um, we are going to give you, there's going to be two live Q&A coaching sessions. I better look at my list here of stuff. <laughs> um, two live Q&A coaching sessions that will be in the Facebook group. So you can ask all your questions and get that specific kind of one-to-one -one help in there. Uh, we're going to, I'll give you the ultimate guidebook to balancing your hormones, my keto startup guidebook as well. Uh, there'll be seven training videos. So half of them will be on the keto diet and how to make it your keto diet. And then the other half are all about hormones and how to balance your hormones in order to optimize weight loss results. How, you know, what are the best tests for, to test for your hormones, how to test from home with a lot of it too, like with really simple, cheap ways that you can actually help determine if, you know, there's a thyroid problem or if there's blood sugar issues that are stopping you from losing weight and how you can test that from the comforts of your own home with little to no money. Okay. Um, also, let's see, supplement recommendations, how to adjust keto for thyroid, adrenal fatigue, and also just how to bust through weight loss plateaus if you do hit that during your keto journey. So that's all coming up in very quickly in the next few weeks. So April 8th, it starts. Registration is open. Get in there. You get a discount if you sign up before April 1st. All right. So on with the show for today. So what is the best diet for weight loss? So working with so many women in the last 20 years of a private practice, I have definitely just seen what works best. And as many of you know, if you've been following me for a while, I am very into primal diets because primal diets, whether that be paleo, autoimmune paleo, or ketogenic, I have seen work best. Now, that being said, there is science and proof that every diet out there works. And that's why you can come across somebody that's vegan or vegetarian or um, just low carb, Atkins, that kind of thing. You can raw, you will hear success stories from all of those, you know, some from, from 
so millions of people. You'll have science, you know, backing all of them saying that, yes, we should be eating this vegetarian, low protein diet. Um, other science that will show, no, we need to be eating low carb and that's what's best for us. So just so you know, we, there is proof besides all the, you know, the crazy, um, you know, weirdo diets, there's probably no proof like to the grapefruit diet or to the master cleanse. I'm trying to think of all the crazy things that I used to do when I was younger. Um, you know, there's just some really strange ones out there that, I mean, I've heard it all. Uh, but those ones, we're, we're not including those ones. We're kind of just talking about like the main vegetarian, vegan, um, you know, high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, there is, you're going to find science that's going to say that they're all the perfect diet. So it's good to just kind of get that through your heads because some people just get so, it's like religion. I always say that dieting can be like someone's religion. If they, if they were saved by, you know, the vegan diet and, you know, all their health problems went away and they lost weight, then it's like, boom, you know, vegan's the very best thing that you can possibly do. And there's no other diet but that. But <laughs> that all said, what, I, what I'm talking about today is personal experience. What I've seen work with the majority of people that I've worked with. And the majority of my clients are female. So we're talking women. And what have I seen work? Because it's what also what can be a lifestyle change, not just a quick fix, right? A lot of these things people can't wrap their heads around for more than 30 days um, or long-term it starts to backfire. And so what I've seen work for long-term and have been easiest as far as not having to calorie count, not having to macro count, not having to do crazy amounts of exercise, not having to watch everything that goes in your mouth, you know, kind of that intuitive eating this, you know, I've seen that primal diets work best that way. I find if it's low fat, low protein or no protein, uh, then yes, the calorie counting is, you know, then it, that you almost have to do it because it's so easy to overeat on high carb foods. Okay. So, and that's because it turns to sugar in the body. Our brains, our bodies love sugar. We're wired to eat sugar. So it comes down to just, you know, that whole hunter gatherer brain of ours that we still have, this hasn't changed very much that we're wired to eat those foods. And so it's harder to control. So you're having to, you know, do, you know, I'm going to have my one cup of rice and my little portion. It's kind of the back to like Weight Watchers, even how they do it. It's all about point system. So it's like, if you go over the points, you know, and that's really no different than calories, um, then you're going to gain weight. And so I find that primal diets work best because you don't have to use portion control. You don't have to calorie count. You don't have to macro count because you naturally create a caloric deficit when you're eating those foods because they're not lighting up inside your brain. Eat more, eat more. So, you know, I always say, think about it like this. It, it, you know, with primal diets, you're eating a lot of animal protein, good healthy fats, right? Vegetables, some healthy starches and some of them. It's hard to overeat on those foods, right? So you can kind of think of it, and I, and I use this analogy a lot, but if somebody gave you, you know, like the best tenderloin steak that you've ever had in your entire life, like cut it with a, a knife or a fork, you know, with just your fork. It's like butter. So it's like the best. I love tenderloin steak. So <laughs> I'm going to use that. And then on the other plate, you have lasagna, like the best lasagna. My husband made lasagna recently and it was so good. And it was like, as soon as it was done, my plate, I was like, oh my gosh, give me some more. Right. And it was gluten-free and all of that. You know, I, we make sure that we still do that much when we have these kinds of things in my house, but I instantly as soon as it was done, I wanted more because it was so good. If I have a tenderloin steak, and I usually, my husband makes, my husband's a great cook. I'll, he'll make tenderloin steak sometimes and he'll actually like put butter on top of it. And it just is like, and he'll put like herbs and stuff and smother it in butter. And it's like so amazing. 
I do not want to eat a second tenderloin steak. Doesn't matter how delicious it is. I usually can barely get through one steak and they're small. I eat tiny little steaks. So lasagna, boom, give me another plate. Tenderloin, no thank you. And that's with most people. You usually don't want to overeat those foods. It doesn't trigger the same response in our brain and in our body to overeat it. So there's none, none of that like having to try to control yourself and yet you still get to enjoy the delicious food. So that is why I've seen primal diets work. I mean, there's a whole ton of science behind it as well, right? I mean, it's the a primal way of eating, whether that, you know, paleo ketogenic, it's been around the longest. It hasn't been, it's the only diets that haven't been a fad diet. You know, true keto, true paleo has, is really what we would have eaten as a hunter gatherer millions of years ago. It's in our genetics, it's in our DNA. That's how we would have eaten. It's how, how we grew our brains and how we became human. We wouldn't have been able to had we not ate animal fat and animal protein, period. So, on that note, I'm going to go over the different primal diets that I've seen work for people and just kind of different ways to do each of them. So I'd like to, you know, first we'll establish that yes, I, in my personal experience, and this isn't for everybody, I have seen that it's worked best, but I, now I want to break them down for you because to eat, each one of us is very different and we're all going to need something or we can all do possibly something different when it comes to how we eat these foods and it might not even have a label per se as far as like is this paleo is it whole foods is it um you know primal is it keto is it aip it may be your own version and that's kind of personally what I've developed over the last 10 years of eating this way is if somebody says to me well are you paleo are you keto I, I am in and out of both. I sometimes do autoimmune paleo. I sometimes eat gluten-free products. It's like, that's what works for my body. I know it works. I know it doesn't. So I'm going to just share with you guys today the different levels of each of those that you might find go, hmm, you know what? Those are kind of what I'm dealing with as far as symptoms go. Maybe this is the, the kind of primal diet that I need to try. Okay, so first off, paleo. So paleo uh, is a, such an awesome step into the primal world. You know, keto is all the rage right now. It's the like one of the fastest growing diets. It's the most Googled diet right now is keto. And you see it everywhere. I'm sure that everybody you know right now is doing keto, right? <laughs> and it's one of the reasons I'm holding all these keto programs right now because this is what my followers want. This is what you guys are interested in. So I'm going to make sure that you do it right. And we're going to teach, I'm, I'm going to teach you all the different little caveats of the ketogenic diet. So you can determine whether or not for you, if it's for you. Okay. So if you're new though, and you're just kind of like, you're coming from standard American diet, walking into all of this, you may want to start with a paleo diet. I often start people with paleo diets. I probably say, mm, if someone's coming to me like fresh off the boat kind of thing, never new to the whole primal world, then for sure I would say like 95% of them are going to be put on a paleo diet because it's so easy and it's just, there's not a, you know, it, keto can be quite restrictive, especially when you're traveling. It can be hard for someone if they're new to this and, um, and getting the macros all dialed in and things like that can get a little bit overwhelming for some. So paleo, number one, great entry for um, if you're new to all of this. You know, follow it for a couple of months. Um, some people are just indefinitely on it, but, you know, and then you can kind of step into, depending on your results, you can then step into a keto diet or you can step into autoimmune paleo or, or FODMAP, low FODMAP. There's different kind of variations of it. Um, but paleo is definitely awesome entry. It's great if you don't have severe insulin resistance. If you have a, you know, if your blood sugars are, are not the greatest, but they're not horrible either, paleo can be really great for getting that in check. I know for myself, I had crazy like hypoglycemia and like if I didn't eat every like hour to two hours, I was shaking and hangry. So, you know, for, for me, 
I didn't have these horrible blood sugar issues. I wasn't insulin resistant, but I certainly was a sugar burner and I had very erratic blood sugar. So going paleo solved all of that for me. No problem. I don't have any, I can go for hours now without eating. So great for that. Um, great if you travel a lot because I mean, I travel a lot for work and no problem sticking with paleo, especially nowadays, super easy. Um, I have family members that they, they're all kind of, I would say about 50, 50% paleo, the rest it's gluten-free for sure in my home, but, um, you know, it's easy to adapt with family members. Uh, Great for inflammation, not really serious inflammation. Like if you're riddled with an autoimmune condition and or rashes, and you've got arthritis and joint pain and headaches, and um, then we're going to talk about what's going to be best for that, which is AIP. Um, but uh, if you just got a little bit of inflammation, um, you feel a little puffy, bloated, digestive wise, for sure, give paleo a shot. Great for weight loss great for coming off of the standard American diet. Okay. Um, one of my fave books actually that I started with 10 years ago was the primal blueprint by Mark Sisson. Super awesome book. When you're just stepping into this, uh, breaks it all down for you. Mark's daily apple was also a great resource for me. So you can check him out if you're new to it. Um, second is the autoimmune paleo. So autoimmune paleo is for someone that has a known autoimmune condition. So if you've been diagnosed with Crohn's or celiac, Hashimoto's, then for sure stepping right into AIP is a good idea because we really want to lower the inflammation as fast as possible when it comes to autoimmune conditions. Because the longer you stay inflamed, the more likely you're going to be to create, um, develop another autoimmune condition and you're going to keep suffering. And in my experience, if you do not change the way you eat, when you have an autoimmune condition, you will only ever get so well, right? Which isn't very well. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. You, it is the foundation of autoimmune conditions. You have to change your diet, period, if you want to get better. It's that simple. There's no, there, in all the people they've tested that have an autoimmune condition, they all have leaky gut. They don't know which comes first, the leaky gut, the autoimmune condition, just one cause the other. I think it's a bit of both, um, but it's just safe to say that you've got gut problems, you've got a leaky gut, your immune system is you know putting out the alarm bells and you need to calm them down. And the best way you can do that is address your gut. So it has to come first. And it's really important to remove the most inflammatory foods that could be causing problems. And so it can be a tough one because it is a little more restrictive than paleo. We're removing, so it's a paleo-based diet, but you know, so you're removing the grains, the beans, the dairy. Um, but you're also removing high food sensitivities as well as um, the high inflammatory foods like uh, potatoes, so any nightshades, potatoes, peppers, tomatoes, they all have a chemical in them that create inflammation in the body. Um, the beans and the grains for, for both paleo and autoimmune paleo are removed because they are inflammatory in themselves as well, because they have things um, like lectins, which are called, which are anti nutrients, and they actually irritate the gut. Um, so for somebody with a super healthy, like iron steel gut, you know, they can handle grains and beans, uh, but they also are high in carbs. So it's not great for weight loss. And that's kind of where our focus is today. But if you've got an autoimmune condition or you've got these high amounts of inflammation, so let's say you've got um, skin rashes, chronic headaches, muscle pain, joint pain, um, then and usually it, all of that coincides with weight gain because it's hard to lose weight when the body's in such an inflammatory state, unless you've got something like Crohn's disease or celiac, where you've, you're just, everything's going right through you and you're not able to put the weight on. Um, either way, you still want to be, you still want to calm down that, that, the immune system as fast as possible. So just jump right into the autoimmune protocol with, so that's a paleo-based diet, removing further foods. You also remove nuts and seeds, which are high food sensitivity, and eggs as well, because the egg whites tend to be a high, the highest food sensitivity actually, like 
about about everything. So it's removing, just taking that one extra step of removing those other foods and doing it for at least 30 days. I always tell my clients, don't look past the 30 day mark, do it for 30 days and then reassess the situation. Cause some people think, Oh my gosh, there's no way I could eat like this forever. It's too restrictive. Um, you have to be like, you have to be careful of spices and seeds and things like, like every, you, you would be surprised at how much of that stuff is in everything. So you really do have to be careful for those, you know, as far as what you're eating. So it can be very challenging for people. But I always say, just commit to 30 days. You can do anything for 30 days. And at the end of it, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to feel so much better that you're going to be able to continue doing it, or you won't feel any different and you go back to it. But, you know, nine out of 10 clients say, well, I would say probably 100% of my clients say they feel so much better. And it's not forever. So a lot of the time you can eat this way for 30 days and then you can actually reintroduce some of those foods that you took out, not the really high inflammatory ones like gluten or dairy I wouldn't introduce, but things like nuts and seeds, which they actually don't have a chemical in them that create inflammation. They're just very hard to digest and they are high food sensitivity. But I do find that many clients that have an autoimmune condition can tolerate the nuts and seeds. So you can re, re, you know, reintroduce those. Some can do some really you know, full fat dairy like yogurt that's also good with the bacteria. They, they can tolerate that. Um, some people can tolerate even a little bit of beans here and there, um, tolerate eggs, egg yolks, maybe, maybe not the whites, but maybe the yolks, which aren't as, um, sensitive to people with autoimmune conditions. So you reintroduce these things one at a time and just see if you get an inflammatory response or if your symptoms come back and then you can kind of judge from there and create your own, you know, paleo minus some of these foods, um, way of eating. And you'll find that you just feel so much better. I mean, I have seen people that, you know, they couldn't lose a pound no matter how little they ate. They had rash, you know, this one woman, I remember she had a rash, she had hives everywhere. She had a big belly on her. She felt horrible. She was fatigued constantly. She was depressed. She was, you know, her skin didn't look good. Her hair didn't look good. I mean, this poor woman, and she was actually told by her doctors, they didn't know what was wrong and they had they did not know what to do for her period they were just like sir we don't know what else to do and she came to me and we put her i put her on the autoimmune paleo and within 30 days it was like she came back looking like a completely different person in 30 days and and then again in two months and then again in three months i saw her and she had lost 20 pounds the rash was gone her hair was back her skin had you know got the color back again she was a different person her energy was back her husband in by default lost i think it was like 40 pounds just by default of her following the autoimmune paleo but i mean she started to reintroduce different foods and just kept out those really high inflammatory ones and she was so happy and she was someone coming from a diet like she really thought oh my gosh there's no way I can do this and I just said to her 30 days and it was so dramatic that she was like I am never going back to the way I was eating before even though it was a health healthy diet she was like no way this it's not worth it so that is who would want to do an autoimmune paleo. Like somebody like that, had I just put her on something like keto, probably wouldn't have worked because there was so many inflammatory foods in there that would not, have, she wouldn't have lost weight. Um, even on the paleo, she probably wouldn't have lost weight. She was too inflamed. There was something else going on. And we just had to just get rid of all the inflammatory foods. So that's who the autoimmune paleo would be for. Um, okay, so then there's keto. So keto is like taking paleo a step farther. We would have gone into keto into a state of ketosis, and I won't get into the, the, all the logistics of all of these diets. You guys can Google them. Um, but keto, you know, you're putting your, state, your body, you're, you're starving your body of sugar in order for it to switch to ketones for energy. So we would have, this would have happened to us naturally as hunter gatherers. We would have gone from paleo diet to keto, um, back and forth because winter times things would have been scarce. We probably would have been only eating some animal protein that we would have come across. We would have gone through for long periods of time without eating 
meat. I mean, without eating carbs, with fruits, things like that, right? In the dead of winter, we would have just gone long periods without eating, period. We would have been fasting for a long time because we just wouldn't have run across animals to hunt or whatever it is. So very natural. We would, the state of ketosis is not dangerous. Ketosis, your your carb intake is going to be quite lowered. So a paleo diet, you're eating anywhere from 50, this is just on average, 50 to 125, 150 um, grams a day. When keto, you're under 50 grams of total carbs a day. So you're forcing your system to burn ketones for energy rather than glucose. So ketogenic diet is super for somebody that has insulin resistance, which is quite, quite common nowadays. I think most people actually don't know that they're insulin resistant, but many, many, many people are, especially if you're quite overweight, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to have some level of insulin resistance. Okay. Now, when you're insulin resistant, your body just basically, it, it does not, it can't even use the sugars that you're eating for energy anymore. Your body's resistant to it, which means it's going to be stored as fat. So you could be eating even a healthy-ish diet. And, you know, maybe you've been trying different diets and you're just, nothing seems to, no, no weight loss is happening. Well, if you're insulin resistant, you can eat healthy foods and it's still going to be stored as fat because your body has become resistant to the insulin. Okay. So this is, like I said, you can Google these things and kind of find out more information about it. I'll I'll do a whole nother show on insulin resistance, but you know, keto, because you're starving your body of that sugar, it really helps to reverse the insulin resistance quite quickly. So I love using it for that. Um, It's also really good. I mean, all these diets are good for hormones because we are putting in more healthy fats into the diet. But keto, 70% of your calories is coming from fat. And we need fat, the good fat, for making hormones, which people don't realize that. It's good cholesterol. We need good cholesterol to make hormones. So, and it's very satiating and like I said, very hard to overeat. So it creates this natural caloric deficit. Um, People just find they, they hardly have to eat anything when they're on a ketogenic diet. And so some people, when they start out, they're like, oh my gosh, Karen, I have to macro count. And I'm like, just give it a week. And you're not going to, nine out of 10 people don't need to macro count because it's so challenging to overeat these foods. If anything, I give them to calorie count because most women end up eating too little of calories and it stops their body from losing more weight. I see this all the time all the time. That's one of the things that we talk about in the Intro to Keto for Women's Hormone Health is be very careful. Like if you're fasting every day or you're, or you're only eating lunch and dinner, well, over time, your body's going to see this as there's not a lot of food around. We better lower the metabolism and you'll stop losing weight. But to begin with, keto is awesome for these things. Okay. So it's great for hormone health really good for lowering inflammation. It's good for autoimmune if you're following an autoimmune keto-based diet because keto tends to have some dairy, full-fat dairy in it. It will have eggs, a lot, quite a bit of eggs. It has nuts and seeds in it um, because your diet is made up of all of these things, right? We're taking out so many, so much of the starches now. You need to fill the void with other foods and that tends to be, you know, a lot of foods that people with an autoimmune condition might be reacting to, but you can absolutely follow an autoimmune based keto diet. And this is what I'm talking about when there's these different little things for each of these diets that you are going to need to tweak to adjust for your specific needs. And that is the point of this is it's all about finding what is going to work for you. So keto I always say there's four types of keto diets. There's just regular old keto, which um, I won't get into, <laughs> but it's just what, you know, what you, like I said, some, some, some eggs, there's full fat dairy, we've got nuts and seeds in there, we've got 70% of our calories coming from fat, so we've got protein, we've got fat, and very little, you know, kind of basically greens in the diet and, or low starchy vegetables. Then there is the autoimmune keto and that's removing the keto the high inflammatory foods out of there and then we have the carnivore keto 
Now, carnivore keto is just basically carnivore. And if you haven't heard of carnivore, we're going to talk about that one too. But um, carnivore is basically just eating protein. And it's a very good way to reverse insulin resistance if keto isn't doing it for you. So it's just taking it one step farther and you're removing all carbs and going to straight animal protein for a period of time while your body uh, you know, get reestablishes that insulin sensitivity. So there's carnivore keto. And then last, there is um, carb, a carb cycling. So carb cycling is really good for people with a thyroid condition, especially if they have an underactive thyroid or a under, uh, an underdosed thyroid. Like if you're, if you're not on the right amount of thyroid medication, then um, doing a carb cycling with your ketogenic diet can be excellent. Um, it's a way that you can do keto safely without bringing down your thyroid farther. Um, it's also really great for people with any sort of adrenal insufficiency, so low cortisol problems. Um, so if you have any of that going on, then doing carb cycling, um, uh, of keto carb cycling is awesome. So keto carb cycling is following a regular ketogenic diet with carb ups every couple of days. So each person, once again, is going to find what's going to work for them. But that might look like I have some clients that do it twice a week at dinner time, where they just eat, you know, a big sweet potato. They lower the fat intake and the up a good and put in a good starchy carbon into their dinner. Um, I have some that do one day a week. Uh, where it's like just low, low, lower on the fat end, not like it is on keto, but lower on the fat end and do, you know, up to about 100 to 150 carbs um, throughout that one day of the week, which is fun. People like that because it's like, okay, I, I had this one day of eating, you know, whatever I want kind of thing. It's not whatever you want, but as healthy as you can. But, you know, for some people that can tolerate it, they'll eat, you know, the beans, the quinoa, the brown rice, white rice, whatever, um, potatoes, sweet potatoes, fruits on that day, um, just to kind of change it up. And it just shocks the system so that it doesn't think that it's starving. It doesn't go into that starved state, doesn't lower the thyroid. Um, it helps with people with adrenal insufficiency. And so I use that quite a bit with uh, the women that I work with. Um, and then last but not least is carnivore. So carnivore, um, like I said, is just straight animal protein. Uh, that is a, it is a one that I would say work with somebody with um, because you want to be watching your blood sugar. You want to be doing it correctly. Um, it's great for reversing insulin resistance because I've seen some people do keto and even long-term keto and really low carb, even 10, 20 grams of carbs a day. And yet they're still there. They're still insulin resistant. And so in those tough cases, I, I put them on a carnivore diet and it works really, really well to reverse those, that insulin resistance quite quickly. It can also be great for people that have um, chronic health, certain chronic health conditions. Um, so you can kind of, if, if, you know, there's a woman, Michaela McPherson, I think it is, who, you know, she had this crazy autoimmune condition. I can't remember what it was, but she always had hives. She had tons of food sensitivities. She had rashes. She had tried every diet there was out there. Nothing worked until she went carnivore. And for her, it was the chemicals that were in vegetables, even in leafy greens that she was reacting to that just her body just did not want. And there's, there's some people that are out there that are like that, that, that they just, they have to remove all of it. So you know, once again, you can Google it, find out some more information. If you think, hey, that might be me. I am getting, you know, I'm stuck here on the keto. Um, in the in my on track program, uh, we offer a paleo, an, an autoimmune paleo and a keto meal plan every week. So I do highlight all three of those. Um, we even have a carb up day in the keto meal plan. Um, we are, we do have a carnivore program coming out in the next few weeks as well, that it's just going to be like a separate one-off program inside of the OnTrack program. So OnTrack is um, a month-to-month -month membership. There's no long-term commitment. Uh, we, you get a, a new meal plan each week. You can choose between all three of those that I just mentioned. And also there's group coaching. We have little mini challenges within the membership. 
We've got um, tons of content on hormone balancing, um, weight loss tools. Um, we're always talking about you know different weight loss hacks and how to you know get past plateaus. And we do liver cleanses and all this fun stuff. So it's really is all about keeping you on track, and that's why it's called on track. Is it was it's a, something I created in order to help women consistently stay with healthy eating instead of it being a 30 day or 60 day whatever it is program. I wanted something that was ongoing for as long as a woman needed that support for. So you can check that out at karenmartel.com forward slash on track. And besides that, you can also check out the Intro to Keto for Women's Hormone Health. If you're listening to this and you thought, hmm, maybe keto is for me, then absolutely head on over there. And like I said, you get the early bird discount if you register before April 1st. So thanks everybody for listening to today's show, listening or watching today's show. This is both on my YouTube and my podcast podcast on track with Karen Martell nutrition and we'll see you guys again next week thanks for joining